Hey guys, Steve Ramsden here, and this week we are going to try and make it look like I'm jumping out of a moving car in a single long take. So this is another stunt based effect, now this one was actually suggested in the comments but it's also one that I actually tried back when I was about 17 and I was making a homemade action movie with my friends. In the original scene my character was being held prisoner in a car and was being taken for questioning, and when the car slows down at a bend in the road I jump out and escape. Now this demonstrates how the scene would usually be done the traditional way, you break it down into several shots and it's simply a quick montage so you think you've seen something that didn't actually happen. But for this new version as usual I wanted to go on better this time because I'm always trying to do a lot with a little and create some impressive results on a budget. So instead I designed this shot as another fake long take experiment similar to my previous video where I smash through a window in one take, which you might enjoy as well. In fact, while you're at it, why not hit that subscribe button to see lots more fun DIY movie making experiments just like this. So just like the window smash effect, this experiment was basically planned as a series of shots that we could film and then combine to look like one long take. A bit like what you'd see in films like 1917 or Birdman, where a quick move can often hide a cut. As the camera needed to move quickly and fit through some small spaces, once again we decided to use our small action camera on a pole to film this effect, so this was nothing fancy camera gear wise. This long take sequence was made harder though, because not only would I have to jump out of the car, but so would the camera, in order to see me land on the ground and allow the scene to continue. As with our other stunt based effects, don't jump out of a real moving car or do anything dangerous, because I certainly didn't and I won't be paying your hospital bills. So to begin with we broke down this scene into sections we could film for real and found a quiet location which would work for what we wanted to do. Obviously we need to start with one shot filmed in the moving car and end with one shot out by the road, and I planned a few other shots in between to help stitch those two main takes together. So when filming we actually decided to work backwards, as the action in the car and the scenery moving past outside would need to match where I ended up, therefore the first shot we filmed was actually the final shot, me landing by the roadside and seeing the car speed off down the road. To do this we had our driver in the car waiting to approach, and then the cameraman and I ran down the grass and I tried to time a jump in the air with the moment the car drove past. Now this was pretty tricky to time and we just had to try it a bunch of different times. We also realised that the camera would have to begin by being tilted down at the ground as I land, as otherwise you would see that the car door wasn't open, and my plan was to add a sound effect later to explain how the door closes after I jump out. Finally we got a take of this shot where the timing looked pretty good, and as we figured the scene needed some kind of ending, I quickly make a dash for it over a nearby gate and into a field, and if it looks exhausting to do this a bunch of times, that's because it was. The second shot we got was inside the car and this now provided the first half of the scene. The camera operator is in the back and it establishes that I'm in the front seat along with a driver who is taking me somewhere I don't want to go. Next I quickly undo my seatbelt and open the door very slightly, and the camera whips out through the window behind me as if it's following me out of the car, and we took the headrest off my seat to make all of this easier to see. <laughs> Sorry. After a few false starts, again we got a shot we thought would work of this action, and as the camera moves past this window divider, this will hide our hidden cut. Next we parked up and got a shot of me jumping out of the stationary car and landing on the ground. Now this is the shot I was going to take the jumping figure from to join the two long takes together, but I wasn't quite sure of the correct angle for this one, as the camera would have to look like it was moving sideways out of the window while slowing down from a very high speed, and also tilting down to the ground all at the same time in a split second. So yeah, this was very tricky. So to make sure we'd got enough options for a background behind our figure, we next got a shot of the car driving along the road at full speed, with the camera held out of the window on the pole. This gave us a great dramatic shot, and it also showed the distance the camera would have to supposedly travel to end up out above the grass. Finally, in case we couldn't use the door opening from the shot of me doing the jump, we shot a clean take of the door being pushed open from a similar angle to where the moving background shot had been taken from. And then that was everything filmed and it was time to fire up Adobe After Effects and see if the whole thing could indeed be stitched together into one long take. 
So the first thing to do was to line up all the best shots we had got on top of each other and work out the timings and the positions in the frame to roughly see if this fairly impossible looking shot was going to work. And happily it kind of did. We start off in the car and then when the camera moves out of the window we transition to a combination of the moving shot taken of the road, the door opening and the figure jumping. And then this merges with my jump and land by the side of the road for real in the last shot. The next step was to cut out these various elements so we were just left with the bits we needed. You can do this either with the roto brush and use rotoscoping or with the pen tool and draw a load of masks. In the end I did it mostly with masks as I found it easier, but be prepared there was a lot of them. Firstly I could cut off the edge of the first shot where the camera moves through the window and alter the rotation so the shot doesn't become as diagonal as it was on the day. Next I could cut out the figure doing the jump and as I decided to use the other door I didn't take the door from this shot. Next came the door being pushed open and the side of the car. Here I had to also cut out what was seen through the window of course, and then these two layers of the door and the figure worked pretty well together. As the figure was going to end up on the ground, I also cut out the tail end of my jump and fall so that this could also be a separate layer and I could change the background behind it for a split second. I could now add the moving background filmed out of the car window and artificially tilt this down to match the angle of the shot where I landed. I also added an adjustment layer with a radial blur here so that I could exaggerate the speed of the scene and make it more dramatic. Using some basic shape layers I could also create some shadows for the figure and the open car door, and this shadow could then blend with my real one as I land in the final shot. A faint colour solid made the door look like it had its glass window still there, and I even added a subtle reflection of the figure jumping by flipping it horizontally and turning the opacity down low. So this was a ton of layers, but it was all just done with the pen tool and some trial and error, so no fancy plugins or extra software was needed at all, just a lot of patience. Then a few finishing touches included some tail lights and a bit of dust behind the car in the distance to make it look like it is quickly stopping when the driver realised I've escaped, and then it was really just some colour matching and some sound design, and then it was time to look back at the finished shot. You'll be there in a couple of minutes, then there's no escape. Oi! <coughs> Well folks, my After Effects Essentials mini course is now live over at DIYMovieMaking.com. It's 30 video lessons to get a complete beginner up and running quickly with the program Adobe After Effects to get results like I do in my VFX work. And it even comes with a downloadable selection of my footage to practice with. Happy movie making and I'll see you next time.